at the beginning of Star Wars, uh, the Old Republic, when we were, when we were building it, um, or coming up with the initial design, we had to decide which planets we were going to put in that were from Star Wars, nice Old Republic. Terrace would be a really cool planet to put in there because it was totally destroyed in the first game. When we decided to destroy Terrace in Knights of the Old Republic, we did so because we felt we really needed an impactful moment from the main villain of the game. So Malak had to come across as someone despicable. We cannot risk her escaping Terrace. Destroy the entire planet. We thought the best way to do that was to give you this world that you had experienced and discovered and come to love and then have him destroy it right in front of you. We're bringing it back in uh, Star Wars The Old Republic. It's one of the major worlds in the game and it hasn't been reconstructed, so it's still in ruins. And it's really cool because you finally get to see what happened, you know, hundreds of years after, after you left um, uh, Terrace, after it got blown up by Darth Malak. When we first heard about Terrace, uh, it was definitely one of the coolest things we'd heard because in my opinion, Terrace is possibly the most iconic planet on the original KOTOR. It's definitely the most memorable. Everybody knows what happened to Terrace. It doesn't end very well. How do we sell the fact that Terrace was a city planet, and then all these thousands of years later, what does it look like then? We were kind of balancing city planet destroyed as long with, you know, it's kind of a swampy, what would it look like now? Because it's not just a bunch of ruins out there, it's actually a city planet that people are familiar with. The general story of Terrace right now is it's, it's been in ruins for hundreds of years. You know, the rack ghouls, which are one of the uh, big enemies in the sewers of the original uh, Terrace and Nice Old Republic, are rampant around the planet. So the rag ghouls, they've evolved over the past 300 years, uh, just in, in ways where their ferociousness, just the, the kind of attacks and the kind of things that they're going to do um, just seem that much more vicious. They're particularly challenging because they, they came from what were human, so bipedal creatures, but because they're encompassed with this disease, you know, they're sort of bent over and twisted. And that was something that we had in the original KOTOR, and we wanted to bring that forward into, into TOR as well. You know, where our animators really shine is where they can use different references to various different kinds of animals and creatures. And so the rack you know, stem from kind of ape-like movements, almost like a, a big giant, you know, gorilla or something like that. And then, you know, how you'd mix that with a, a human and, and how it would move. The story of Terrace in the Old Republic is, is a very interesting one. It's a very symbolic world. The Republic wants to rebuild it to show that even with all the devastation wrought by Malak and, and the Sith, they can rebuild, they can survive, they can come back from this kind of thing. Um, conversely, of course, the Imperials don't want them to rebuild. They don't want to have this evidence that the Republic is strong enough to come back from this kind of devastation. The original plan for Terrace was to have a, you know, a, a giant swamp. But once we actually started blocking uh, Terrace out, we really started to push what we could do with the vertical nest. And then everybody saw them like, oh my god, that looks great. And so we just kept going and going and more and more. And eventually we got to where everybody saw it and they're like, wow, that's definitely Terrace. Terrace is one of the more interesting worlds in uh, the Old Republic, not just because it's you know, an old world from Knights of the Old Republic, but also because it's a type of world that hasn't been explored in video games very often, which is this huge Coruscant-like or you know, metropolitan-like uh, city that's been completely wiped out. So you have all these huge skyscrapers that have been uh, destroyed and toppled, and you have these incredible vistas, you have these incredibly unique areas to explore. It's, it's just a very unique looking planet, and uh, I think people are going to be impressed with it. I know that it's one of our favorite planets here in, on the team. One of the great things about the original Knights of the Old Republic games was players were able to make a, an impact on the Star Wars galaxy. They were able to leave their mark on this, this wonderful setting. And in the Old Republic MMO, we're trying to make sure we recapture that spirit, um, that importance of the player. So whether you're a Republic faction or an Imperial player, you are going to get a chance to make a real difference. Uh, you get to determine what is going to happen to this world and it will be reflected in what happens in the game. Um, your choices actually make a difference.